Good, uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm uh, Alan Burnett. Um, you can see my smiling face on the slide, hopefully there. Um, COO of Corso, so um, responsible for all the you know, consulting and operational and hosting parts of the of the organisation. I'm going to spend um, yeah, 40 minutes, 45 minutes with you today, just discussing some of the uh, some of the things we found around moving from office tools to to enterprise architecture based upon um, various projects that we've run in the past and and the tooling that we've developed to try and you know, overcome some of the issues and problems that we see moving between uh, an office environment uh, and perhaps a more formalized tool for, for enterprise architecture. So I'm going to go through a series of slides. Um, uh, the short agenda. Yeah, so ask the obvious question, who uses office tools? Okay, common problems encountered. Uh, try and show you some of the things that, uh, that we've seen happen uh, and uh, yeah, some of the issues that causes. What alternatives are there to office tools? Of course, there is an alternative, which well, I guess why we're on this conversation. Uh, so our approach to, these, uh, to, 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 uh, to managing this, uh, the, the move between office and uh, EA tools. And then I'm going to walk you through um, a very simplistic but common journey that, that that people take as uh, they move between these this environment. So the whole whole presentation about moving from an office to to, to a more formalised tool like like, uh, like ours or any other. Okay, so I guess the question is, who uses office tools? And I think everybody does really. Um, it's kind of uh, on everybody's desktop just about. Uh, and if not, then you can get hold of free copies from Google now spreadsheets. So, so they're everywhere. Yeah, so. So we're talking, when I talk about Office, I'm talking about Excel and Word. I'm uh, also talking about Visio uh, as a Microsoft um, add-on to, to one of the products in, in that space. Uh, and, and maybe PowerPoint and, and sometimes PDF, not forgetting PDF, the, the, the documentation. So these are the tools that people are using. Um, that people use them in different ways for different purposes. And it's, it's often the glue between multiple tool sets. I mean, I use, I use spreadsheets myself for for managing my time, for, for managing consultants' time, for, for getting some data out of one system and manipulating it. We all, we all do. Uh, and, and it's a very simple way to, to, to do that. We also use tools for office where functionality doesn't exist. So, you know, we want to do some calculations, we'll add something up or draw some pictures, etc. then we can do that. So there's very simple, a lot of reasons why we use it. Uh, it's, it's, it's everywhere. It's not just around architecture. It's in everything we do. And the beauty of an office tool is, you know, business and technical users are quite uh, you know, can use it, pick it up and use it without any problem. Problems you can present concepts to new new audiences, especially around PowerPoint. So you know, like we all will pick up a, a PowerPoint to describe very quickly a, a concept. We don't have to be too formal about that. Um, if we're using our Visio, we might be drawing shapes and diagrams. And just to get more into using these tools in an EA context, then typically what we find when we go to any environment is that uh, there are spreadsheets to maintain lists of things. So this applications or services with all their descriptions and uh, sometimes quite complex um, and even sometimes access databases you'll include that in the, in the office tool set to, to represent lists of things as well as um, Visio to, to draw things and, and lock up a diagram and shape. So it's a common you know, common environment we, we come across. Sometimes, and I'll put maybe in brackets here, uh, what if analysis, you know, as you get people get more into uh, into spreadsheets, and they can maybe create pivot tables and, and do some. Uh, and, and, well, it's kind of sometimes a stretch, and quite often there's you know one or two users of Excel that know how to do that, and most people, um, well, if not know not how to do it, but struggle to remember how to do it from the last time they did it. So as you get more into uh, some analysis features, you, even even with Office tools, it's, it's not everybody that can do that. So, um, and it really means that you know, this, this, this business and technical uses to pick. And use raw things that the office products, and I say broadly the office products, have always been the de facto um, EA tool standard. And actually, I can remember a number of uh, just going back to us, looking back through some some old presentations that, that, that I had, one from 2008 and one from 2012, and both of them had um, a, a, a graph representing the, the current most popular tool sets for enterprise architecture. So it was a formal um, survey done by both of these were done by Gartner actually. Uh, and uh, both show very much the same story, even despite those, those uh, it'd be five years apart. They show very much that there are a bunch of tools that uh, you know, 10, 15, 20 percent of people were using, but predominantly it was yeah, Office, uh, Word, uh, etc. 
Excel PowerPoint vendors yet. So the situation's not really changed. If, if I look through our you know, prospect list or, or people that are interested in our products, and we, we always ask, you know, what tool set do you use? And most commonly, it's it's um, yeah, it's Excel product based office products and getting busier. So you know that's the that's the that's where we are, and that's uh, that's the space we see. So yeah, I mean the, the, there's an adjunct to that. Why why are these tools prevalent? I mean they are intuitive. You know, in a word you can pick up and write write a document very quickly. You can bulk stuff. It's very simple to create something. Same with a spreadsheet. Uh, everyone's got a copy, pick up and use. Um, because we only have used 20 percent of you know, the functionality of these tools, and they do a very short learning curve. And, you know, people like short learning curves because you can get, get up and running quickly. Okay. Now, the beauty is of, a, of a tool is you can pick it up and use without necessarily concerning yourself with, um, you know, with what other people are doing. So it's a single-use product. Uh, so we can, you know, if I create a spreadsheet, it doesn't really matter what somebody else is doing with the same data somewhere else. For what I'm, try what I'm currently trying to achieve. Uh, it might actually matter down the line. I'm going to talk about that uh, as, we, as we get through the presentation. But as I'm using it, I can pick it up and use it. It's very, very simple. Yeah. Uh, again, business and technical users, the reason why business technical users use it is prevalent. Um, it's yeah, pick up and use it. And the other point I've noticed, even, you know, even my kids, you know, they're all doing spreadsheets and PowerPoints and Word documents from, from a very early age. So you know, it's, uh, every, everyone's using the tools and everybody will use the tools in the future. So. So it begs the question, really, why, if things are so easy, uh, it's out there and everyone can use it, what, why would you kind of move away from, from that environment? Okay, so I guess the, the point here is, you know, there are short-term usage gains, as I described, about picking up and using um, intuitive tool sets out there, um, versus actually if you want to maintain something uh, like an architecture, which is... Uh, developed by multiple people in multiple areas of the business. Uh, diagrams come from multiple sources, partners, subject matter experts, etc. Then maintaining those different views is, is a longer term, uh, gives you a longer term issue. I'll investigate some of those, uh, some, uh, some practical examples of, of why we see that. Um, so the, the, the common use is, the common issue is, is actually connecting the data. So when you, the beauty of me picking up and, and drawing and, and creating a, a chart or a um, spreadsheet is that yes, it's, it's for me. But uh, I choose certain abbreviations or spelling or capitalization or certain taxonomy um, when I'm working in, 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 this, in this, uh, this format. If I get really sophisticated, I might create links to other things that have data in. But you know, as you find as you pass these things around between people, then those links are not on everybody's machine, and sometimes they're dead. Yeah, and those independent updates and uh, uh, are always out of sync. You know, there's always there's always something different about the data. So there's there are common issues around connecting those pieces together. And with Visio, um, although there's been a drive with Visio to create more stencils and templates, which is great uh, around supporting particular methods. There's still a lot of people out there just using it to, to draw, and there's no real rigor in terms of the modeling defining the standards uh, out there to do that. And then if you use these two together, and again that's a, a common scenario using uh, you, you've got your your content in your spreadsheet, um, you've got your drawing in Visio. There's no way necessarily of linking those together. And somebody changes one thing, they change again abbreviation, spelling, capitalization, uh, even the uh, taxonomy in, a, in, in the, the diagram. Then that doesn't align itself to a spreadsheet. And if you've got more than one person using a spreadsheet, then that, again that, that gets misaligned. So again, I went back to some work we did recently with with the clients who you know, were looking at the, actually this study on for them the cost of of, um, of maintaining uh, Excel sheets and they reckon they spent 20 more 20 times more time on integrating data than actually creating it in, 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 in the first place. Yeah, so um, very practical number. So let's look at a common scenario uh, sort of to hammer that point home. And again, this is uh, commonly, what we do, we, we run a lot of quick starts. A lot of uh, so a quick start for us is 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 us going into a client and getting data from sources as quickly as possible into into a tool, uh, our PA platform. And um, yeah, what we're trying to achieve is to in the, in the minimum of time possible is to build a model that's that's usable, okay, so that you can you can demonstrate um, in our case a product with uh, customer or client data in there. 
So what we often find is, um, is we will get uh, data from different parts of the business. So I've got a business team doing one thing, maybe looking at uh, high-level business processes, and they, for them, a process interacts with some kind of application. And then they may describe an application in a certain way. So on the left-hand side here, we've got you know, this business team here have got a Visio diagram, and they've got a spreadsheet, and they've def defined a particular application component, um, which is SAP AP. Um, they've got some various high-level um, names for, 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 for what the business is viewing with the system name. Then we've got a portfolio team, separate team, who I guess is probably in charge of the application name, but again, that sometimes that's not always the case in an organization. There's, there's, there's naming is, a, is another political uh, minefield, but in this case, uh, they've got a spreadsheet, and it's got a list of the applications. That's what they're called. Yeah, something called a bank application here. And then we've got a technology team who are maintaining our technology stack. I've got a yeah, detailed set of the particular devices and the system software and the, the infrastructure components and the, and the, and the links of those, between those inter, uh, infrastructure components. Again, linking back into uh, application component. And in this case, they, it's called AP. So actually, if I'm taking this um, spreadsheet, I, uh, this Visio, all the processing here, I've got SAP AP here, I've got bank application here, I've got AP over here. Are these the same? Okay. So they might be. I don't know. So, so what I have to do uh, somehow is just try and resolve this. Okay. So this is this is where we have we'll get some of the inherent problems in, in maintaining um, different spreadsheets. I mean, I've, I've taken an extreme example here, but again, this is very very common uh, in terms of trying to um, you know, resolve some of these inconsistencies that exist across the different groups. Okay. So. How do we manage that? Yeah. What is the alternative? If, that's, if I'm painting a picture of um, spreadsheets and Visio out of sync and all the issues and problems, and there's got to be an alternative. Okay. So, and there are alternatives. There's, there's a number of different ways of trying to, to solve this problem. Okay. Um, you've got tools that import export from office products. So I guess you know most EA tools, enterprise architecture tools will, will do this, have some kind of uh, feature and function that imports Visio and imports Excel, and we're, and we're no different from that. And, and not, as, uh, yeah, we're not trying to pretend anything else. Then you have repository-based tools. Um, some are more formal repository-based tools where you know, they're interested in diagrams and structure, that they just pull the data in the associations. There's other tools out there that, that you know, try and maintain, um, to some extent, uh, an MS Office-based approach. Okay. But again, even, even in this environment, you still have to maintain the links if things change. So if I change something in a spreadsheet, and I've got it, even if I've got everything tagged in a repository, I've still got to maintain any associations and links that might be broken um, as, I, as I stay in my environment. And so I've got to manually retain the integrity of the models, and put, I've got to impose standards on those models if I wish to maintain them so that everyone's using the same techniques and approaches and methods. Um, and that's, you know, that's outside even thinking about um, what you do with spreadsheets, it's, that's more about uh, assigning or working out or understanding a, a structure to your enterprise architecture and the, and the approaches that you might take. And often these tools may lack key analysis tools or you've got to use a third party tool to, to do that. Okay, so the, the choice you have really is to, is to try and work natively in spreadsheets with Visio and accept the high data management because you're going to have to, to maintain that as you go. Or bite the bullet, I guess, and leverage the existing knowledge and move it into a particular product that's designed to support that collaborative and iterative process. Okay. There's no surprise, obviously, if you're at the Corsair seminar, webinar, but you know, Corsair Agile is an example of, of doing that. Okay. So what we're saying here, what we're looking at here is, firstly, why would you move from, from, uh, from a known environment, Excel environment, what is your environment into another tool? Well, firstly, that tool has to, to manage that process. Here we're looking at something that manages real-time multi-user updates. Yeah, so if somebody changes a link or association, that's, that, that automatically flows through everywhere else in the, in the model. Uh, there's a standard notation that's agreed, and uh, as a, as a, you've got to take a you know, known standard or start to adapt your own if you really wish. But it's, it's maintained within the, within the tool. And that collaboration and management of the architecture process is, is in there. Okay, so yeah, the Agile EA tool is, is a web-based platform that's, that's focused on collaboration. It's a SaaS-based tool. So you know, what, we're, what, we, what, what we're trying to provide here is a single place that stitches all those views, the Visio views, or you know, it could be other things, other Visio as well, views that come in, 
and the content, i.e. the detail behind uh, the objects on that the associations, fully representationally consistent, and I'll discuss what that means in a second across all models. Okay, so there's no need to rebuild every time that you change things, diagrams or spreadsheets. And the tools will provide impact analysis around analytics, heat maps, and you can build roadmaps at the back end of that around sort of date properties, etc. So we're looking to, to uh, look for proposals as they move to a centrally maintained source of the truth that has the tools necessary to firstly be you know, pick up and use. So it's not you know, a tool that you have to spend, you have to work with IT to install and have a long training program. It's something that you can manage. Okay. So representational consistency is, is something I mentioned on the, on the last slide. Uh, and so I guess is at the, at the hub of why you want to pull everything into a, to a central source. Okay, so in the top left here, we've got kind of uh, what I'm calling an application viewpoint. So I've got a particular application component, which has some subcomponents and that accesses some data. Okay, so that may have been imported from a spreadsheet, uh, sorry, from, from Visio as a diagram, or we might have just drawn that. Okay, doesn't matter. But when I define each of these elements in here, then when I drill into something like the uh, claim data management application component, and I look at the associations that has, you know, they're, they're defined also in that central data source. So I know that, uh, for instance, the relationship with the customer data access, we've got a link here to customer data access, which is uh, an application interface. That's in the tool here as it's shown on the diagram and shown as a, as a, as a line item in the, in the list of relationships. Uh, same with the data object claim data management, um, you know, lead to risk assessment, etc. Okay, through another, I use this another application component. So I know that that element, those things are defined in there on the diagram. If I draw another relationship on this diagram, then that will add to this list. So the, the central source maintains all that. The representational consistency means that when I go to another viewpoint, like the service viewpoint, and I push, I put claim data management on there, which is a, um, again, it's the same symbol here. Um, I can ask the tool to say, right, show me what's connected to that. And it'll show me, you know, so damage claim data is from here, but there's also other uh, models or other diagrams or other parts of the repository uh, links to claim registration, register claim, paid claim, some of the processes that are associated with that. So it means that, you know, when I, when I draw uh, two elements on here, the tool knows that there's an association between them, between them because it's there in the repository. So that's, that's the representational consistency. It doesn't matter which view you draw it in. The, the diagram is, is just a view on the underlying repository. Okay. So imagine from, a, from an MS Office perspective, then we've got kind of maybe data in different spreadsheets that people have built that we're, that we're combining here and, and making sure they're in sync. We've probably got different video diagrams. Okay. So we've got a number of moving components to just create this one single view, which um, it's inside a single tool, and you can analyze it like this. You can pull that data straight out and build a, build a model. Either so, we've got an application viewpoint and a service management viewpoint here. We could take a uh, business domain viewpoint, so on and so forth. So we decide what viewpoints we want to see from from underlying data. So it's more about rather than just drawing pictures to represent your architecture, it's it's building a, a, a consistent a representation, a consistent model where the diagram where the, a diagram is just a view. And then you can choose as you wish to pick out the elements you, you want and see the associations and relationships between them. Okay, so that's that's kind of a preamble. That's the reasons why you know, we we would suggest you know the, the, to take the step of moving to uh, tool we can manage all of this. So what I thought I'd do at this point is kind of really simplify a, a process and show how the, the process of man of bringing data from third-party tools like Visio and, and, and spreadsheets. How you then take that through a, a further journey around the analysis and design ultimately a roadmap of, uh, of application components and how we manage that process. So you get a feel for more of, of, of what, what is in, what is in uh, available to you within a, within a product um, once you pull that data in. So I'm really trying to show here how the effort of moving away from a, from a known environment like a, you know, Excel and Word is, is it's worth the effort of moving to a, to a separate tool. So we're just, I'm just going to walk through this quickly. Going to import the diagram, import a spreadsheet, build out the model. So um, use your diagram or some of the additional objects. Analyze the, a wider model impact and add that to something called a Kanban. So a Kanban for us allows us to manage the process of, of developing uh, either a future view or, or actually fleshing out a particular architecture we're working on now. 
uh, collaborating with others then to help us build out the model, uh, running charts and pivot table to see the impact. We create a roadmap and manage by the dashboards. So I'm going to not go through each of these steps, just going to show you a quick, a quick view how, of how you do that. So some practical uh, steps that you take. Again, this is very common to what we would do as part of um, any startup process with a client to try and get data into the tool quickly to, to, to show you value quickly. Okay, so let's start with Visio. Uh, we've got a Visio diagram, we, we, we import that. So the important thing here is about, is about mapping. If, if, you've, if you've got an environment which from, in Visio where you have a, you know, a documented template, so say as an document template or, or any other standard template, then that's obviously a little bit easier because there, there's a direct relationship between what might be in the Visio diagram in terms of the shape uh, and what's expected inside Agile EA. So here I've mapped sort of process. I've got a, uh, I've actually got an example of what the, the original one like. It looks just like this, but with in Visio. Um, so I've got process, a user, a document, and a rounded rectangle. So those are the, those are the shapes. If you dig into your Visio diagram, if you look at the uh, settings in it, it'll tell you what shapes you have, what you picked. Because if you're not using a, a standard template, then the likelihood is that you will have things like rounded rectangles and documents and various things in there. Okay. So this tool, what the tool allows us to do then is map to a particular component within the model. So I've said, right, and there's a drop down list of, 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 of uh, meta types. So I've said process maps to business process. It's pretty simple. User to actor. Okay. Document to data object. Yeah. Okay. And then around the rectangle, which is you know, perhaps the most unknown one, but Look at the original diagram. It looks and it feels like an application service. That's what I'm going to map that to. So that's that's that step. Then I take the step of saying, okay, when we have a connector, and in Visio you can have all these the uh, number of connectors in there. Uh, usually they're one type of dynamic, but this is looking at what association types you might have between between the the, the different objects. So, so actually, so the, what the tool will pick out is is what the, what associations exist, and then you put in the relationships. And by the way, you only have to do this once. Once you've done it, then you can really reuse it on, on further diagrams, etc. So, so this is a, the effort's first time through this. But it does also allow me to choose what, which, how I want to bring relevant things in a certain methodology. So it could be that I'm moving from a you know, non-Archimate environment that's in Visio to an Archimate environment. So I've got uh, one team of people using Visio that uh, aren't sure of the Archimate standard, then I can do the mapping here as well. So it doesn't mean I can pull in the data as uh, and represent the data as I, as I see fit. Okay. So um, once you've done that, then that create the diagram, and it shows here the, the different um, relationships between them. So, so what we've imported import at this point is a diagram. It's also created um, yeah, framework objects for each of these different elements. Then what we do is import spreadsheet. Okay. Uh, and the spreadsheet and the format of the spreadsheet. I mean, spreadsheets can take any format, so you know, we do have to apply some rules to, to the import. And we've got a you know, clearly documented way of documenting our uh, elements. And this is just a, a, a list of services. Uh, and the ones in red actually are, are the ones that refer to services on the previous slide. Um, it's just red to, to highlight it in this example. And we've added a description and also added a date for the next standard review date. Okay, so that's the spreadsheet, and then when, I, when it's input into the tool, and again, it's just a case of, of, of saying, right, I want to take this spreadsheet and import the whole lot. And if it exists already, then it'll overwrite the elements of that spreadsheet. Uh, you don't, again, you don't have to have every, every property in your spreadsheet, just the ones you're interested in, and pull it into the, into the, into the tool. So here we have an application service, and what I've done is highlighted in one of the property sets here, so you've got the, the name, the description. The original Visio import would, would have brought us just the name, uh, but now we've added description and the next and the next standard review date. Okay, and then I've added manually. I've added standard as a standard class. So I'm starting to build this out as I as I go. Okay, so I've connected those pieces together. So again, back to my original scenario. If I have different views of what customer management service is, application in different groups, so different spreadsheets, then I resolve them outside of the tool and bring the uh, bring it into the tool as a as a, as, a, uh, as a resolved object. Alternatively, what I can do is I can actually import more than one spreadsheet and then ask for people to collaborate on those items to give me some sort of consensus about what, what the right answer might be and then remove the ones I don't need. So there's a manipulation process that you can go through uh, if we're trying to resolve some of the differences. So once that's in the tool, uh, and again, we just had the claims management piece, 
I create what's called the impact diagram. So the impact diagram is something we can run here to take customer management service, which is linked to order processing. That's what we saw in the one diagram. But actually, in the model, there's a whole, there's another link to another application component. And the application component itself has a number of different relationships. Oh, sorry, just come back to this um, So this impact diagram allows us to look at not only the first level, so here we've got customer service, uh, customer management service, the first level of relationships are here, order processing uh, and claim management. And then around the outside, we see the, the, the second layer, so it's linked to other processes, other application components. So this is the process of looking at the impact of what we think is maybe a single item on its own, but now we start to look at what else is related to this, this object. And that might be very important when we're trying to understand how uh, we want to flesh out this model in more detail, have we got everything that we need in, in terms of building this model. And again, these other objects may have come from other sources, other spreadsheets, physio diagrams, in the old world, there would be disparate things that would be completely unconnected. Now they're, they're things with the, the so a bunch of associations. Okay. So we can visualize those objects and those associations. And then what we can do is we've got some data in the tool. We've understood what that data is. We've understood what, what data might already be connected in the models that we previously built. And then we put this thing on what we call a Kanban. So the Kanban here is uh, showing us uh, various stages of developing a particular architecture. And one of the things I'm trying to do here is the reason why I've imported this data and there's data already in my model is because I want to look at a particular, I'm interested in a particular area, which is improving the correctness of customer information. So, you know, I've, I've, I've taken what I have and started to develop further what that might involve. So by using a quick search and to put information on your Kanban, I'm just going to search by the diagram and look at the impact diagram. It shows me which objects are on the impact diagram. So I don't have to bother going to try and find all these things because I've done the impact diagram. It's there ready for me. And I just add to the form, click on the green button, and that allowed that to uh, one of these stages and that can start to move out as I go. So, you know, the, the objects I'm looking at here in terms of um, to do's, yeah, so I'm working on back office. What I mean by that is I'm working on trying to model and understand the back office. Okay, I understand what, what that means in terms of the definition of that particular object in my repository. That's outside of any other spreadsheets, is now starting to say, right, I'm going to take this object, I'm going to try and understand it. And because I know it's in this particular context, then I can get a feel for who might help me with this. I can then collaborate. I can ask people to directly collaborate, mapping out what back office is, and maybe something else that it's connected to, you know, which applications are there, et cetera. And they can, what they can do is then resolve and devise the, the underlying model in my architecture to try and get some sense from it. And obviously, is these other things I can see I've shown here. This is what we call these, these little queries, heat maps that I've run here. Again, because I'm using Kanban, I can then do some further analysis, which allows me to sort of peek inside the data. And, and actually, these are just showing me business critical processes and applications. Okay, so this highlight here, just uh, I'll just run a query. So I'll just click on this button you know, at the top of the sheet, and then that will populate uh, the model. So I can I can take a camera and look at what's the what is the most business critical elements and focus on those. Okay, so again, this is stuff that because it's in a tool, this is what these these different um, uh, components that we can use to, to model out from, from an EA perspective, then that's how we can make that move from, from our office tools to, to EA. I mean, go further. Okay, I won't I won't go through the whole end-to-end uh, -end piece, but as we develop those uh, Kanbans, we can do further impact diagrams. So you don't have to use it at the start; you can use it in the middle. We can create different views. So I've got a capability view uh, around heat maps, you know, showing all my capabilities here, business capabilities split into um, subgroups and then heat map for, to show the, the important ones. I can use charts and pivot tables if I want to, if I want to look at some of the uh, you know, assessment values. So maybe one spreadsheet has got a set, set of assessments around the application components, you know, whether they uh, are business critical, whether um, you know, 24-7, whether, you know, whether the level of complexity with high, medium, or low, that sort of thing. So we can chart that and try to see, uh, uh, get some in, insights into the data. If it's cost-based data, uh, again, we can use pivot tables within the tool. Uh, you know, I said before, you can, you can use pivot tables in spreadsheets, but again, that's not core functionality for most people. Here we've got a, you know, this, this is where you might want to slice and dice the data and see what you're spending on applications that are out of service or applications that are non-standard. Uh, find, that, find that you're continuing maintenance on a whole heap of non-standard applications. Okay, and they'll pull it out and get some heat maps there. So, go and through each piece of that. So once you've worked with the um, with the data, we're going to start to look things like roadmaps. So uh, if you've got 
who's building up a portfolio and trying to understand how you're going to deliver a particular capability. Uh, then we can use the road mapping uh, to pull that out, uh, either application layer or a technology layer, feature layer, you know, work package or program layer. And then use the smart queries again, these kind of queries just to show us uh, maybe some dependencies. This is actually showing us, it's got multiple things, They're things that are reliant on a particular, in this case it's actually the Unix server farm, that's what these, the purple, and actually things where the te there's a te piece of technology that underpins this, and bear in mind there's a set of relationships that we've built here, navigation component down into my physical layer. And inside there, the system software that's, going out, that's actually going out of service this year, so I can highlight that using a smart query, query to show some of the, um, the dependencies on, on, on other elements that aren't on this, uh, this roadmap. Yeah. So again, we've kind of just gone through a simple journey of importing data where we've just got you know, spreadsheets and putting stuff and lists of things to, to the point where we can now start to manage our process, our, our development of our, of our architecture process, and do some, some, some sweet analysis on that. Yeah. So my question here is how can this be achieved using, using office tools? And that's kind of where you know, the crux of this is saying why, why you want to move between one and the other. Okay. So I, I did mention collaboration before. You know, as, as you try and resolve some of the complexities in this architecture, then having things embedded in documents, etc., is actually quite difficult around collaboration. So what we've been, we've been keen to focus on is adding a collaboration component to the platform to allow you to, to, to ask or to invite information, information exchange from a wider stakeholder group by actually saying, right, here's, a, here's the thing in, in this model I want you to look at. So it's not a case of looking at a document or or just putting something onto onto uh, yeah, a web page and saying take a look it's, it's physically saying uh, you know, we need to collaborate on this please help me so it means that you can you can focus really on on the types of the organisation that you want so maybe that's a business uh, user so uh, or a, an executive user and again we can subdivide a model down subdivide our model to to, uh, to split these or it, it's an IT fit, uh, particular um, knowledge base, all their subject matter experts, so maybe it's system owners, and the system owner knows best about the attributes in the system. Now the spreadsheets, and again we often, we often find the spreadsheets out there with data in, but we don't know how old that data is, or how relevant or up to date it is, and quite often it, it isn't, or it might be up to date for a particular part of the organisation. If you look at a broad organisation, then you need to get collaboration, and if all the subject matter experts um, directly in updating that data. Yeah, so the model we use in a platform because it's a SaaS-based tool, you know, it's, 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 it's a URL for everything. So you know, the business owner can just have a, or a subject matter expert can just have a URL which they can update. You know, so the learning process and the learning required to, to manage and maintain that is not, not excessive. It is something you can pick up if you haven't looked at it for a few months. So with workflow uh, and management of that workflow, they ask people to collaborate. They can, they can then collaborate and they can then I say nom normally check back because it's not a mechanical thing, it's just saying, yeah, I've, I've completed that, that task. Then we have communities. So a community is allowing a group of users or a subset of users access to parts of a model. So again, if you're looking to, to collaborate uh, with particular stakeholders, then you can narrow the model down. So uh, in our architecture, we might pull from all these different sources, but when we push it back out for validation, then we can push back just uh, an element of that. Yeah, so that might be a capability heat map to the business user, which hides all the complexity uh, with the, you know, the, the, the spaghetti and wiring diagrams that sit beneath it, just focus on, okay, what capabilities do we have, and can we deliver that capability in a particular time where it's dependent upon something that, that, that there's an issue with, so we can push that out. And then the community says, okay, uh, structures it so that only indiv certain individuals can see that. Okay, it's, again, the collaborations around the SAS piece is live, so it's not just putting stuff on the, on the web. So we don't actually need to publish this model. Um, we can we can spit things out in the PDFs if you want to have some physical documentation, but there's no real need to publish it as an HTML report because it is live, and you know we have things like um, reviewer licenses to, to manage that review. Okay, so uh, reviewer can you know, reviewers read only, but um, you know they can make comments and be part of the, the tasking process and the workflow if you need to. Okay, so again, that's all part of that collaboration piece is having a mechanism, but also a sort of licensing to, to support that. And then things like APIs for integration into other tools in the life cycle. So you know, I've, I've focused heavily here on, on Excel and, and Visio, 
and to a lesser extent Word and PowerPoint. But there are other tools out there as well. You know, the life cycle, there's development tools, you know, there's uh, SharePoint, there's, um, you know, there's process management tools, and then there's um, you know, hardware sniffing tools out there. So the API is important then for integration. And all the things we talked about apply, you know, where, again, you've got another set of, of abbreviations and perhaps different slides and taxonomies that, again, you have to manage that in the model. So if you really want to link um, CMDB or uh, your development environment into some sort of into the architecture, then yeah, it has to be uh, in some sort of central source with an API. Um, 